In today's video, I want to compare five different Wi-Fi 6E compatible PCI Express cards to see how they perform now that the 6E routers and access points are becoming available. These cards were bought at different price points to see if price correlated with performance and overall to see if the upgrade to Wi-Fi 6E is even worthwhile. If you want to find out more about these cards and see the performance results, then stick around and watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like as it does help support the channel. Back in early 2021, I compared some of the Wi-Fi 6 PCI Express cards to see how they performed and really found that when they worked, the performance was very close between one brand and another with no real standout winner. Now that Wi-Fi 6E is available and starting to become popular, I wanted to test some of these new PCI Express cards to see how they performed with 6E. As I just upgraded my home Wi-Fi to 6E and installed two of the new Unify U6 Enterprise units, I was really impressed with the performance and was really interested to see how these cards would perform. I purchased a variety of these cards at different price points, ranging from about 50 bucks on the high side down to around $23 on the low side to establish the best overall value and to see if the higher price tag resulted in better performance. All of the cards claim the same basic specs, but the visual construction is quite different between all the cards. So let's quickly go through each card, cover the specs, and put each of them through some testing to see how they perform. The first card in this roundup is the TP-Link Archer TXE 72E, which is the most expensive card in the roundup. Though not stated directly in their documentation, this card is based on the Intel AX210 chipset, which is the same as other cards used in this roundup. It supports WPA3, Bluetooth 5.2, tri-band wireless, and ultra-low latency. Like the other cards in this roundup, it comes with a low-profile bracket, and the card is really well constructed. Next we have the OKN AX5400, which is based on the same AX210 chipset and also supports Bluetooth 5.2, WPA3, tri-band wireless, and ultra-low latency. One of the unique points of this OKN is that it's basically a laptop card that's inserted into a PCIe bracket. Certainly not an issue, but it may be a benefit if you later want to transfer the device to a laptop. Unlike other cards, there's very little in the way of heat sinking. The EDUP is also based on the same Intel AX210 chipset, and as, as the others do, supports Bluetooth 5.2, tri-band wireless, and ultra-low latency. It has a more traditional construction and has a very small metal heat shield. Next, we have the U-Bit Wi-Fi card, which is also based on the AX210 chipset. Like the others, it supports 5.2, tri-band wireless, ultra-low latency, and the construction of this card is pretty different. It comes with a pretty hefty heatsink. The last card in this roundup is the Fenvi. Like the others, it's based on the Intel AX210 chipset and supports the same specs, such as Bluetooth 5.2, tri-band wireless, and ultra-low latency. This card also supports a pretty hefty heatsink. The setup for these cards is mostly straightforward. When you first plug them in, they'll be recognized as a standard Wi-Fi card and even correctly show up in the device manager. However, they'll not see a 6 GHz network until you load the latest Intel driver. You can attach to a standard 2.4 or 5 GHz network to get it working so that you can download the latest Intel driver. And once you install it, all your wireless networks should show up, including any tri-band or 6 GHz only network. As these cards are all based from the same Intel chipset, the latest Intel driver works for all of them. Now that we've seen these cards, let's see how they perform. Just to clarify how I'm going to test these cards, I'll be using iPerf and a self-hosted benchmark called Open Speed Test. Both will be running on my Unraid server over a 10 gigabit connection, and the access point will be connected to a 2.5 gigabit PoE adapter to avoid any bottlenecks. All the tests will be run on the same system, which is a 9th gen Core i3 that I use for testing. As we're testing for maximum speed, we'll be running the test from my server and not from the internet to allow for best performance and to show the maximum capacity of these cards. Lastly, I created a 6 GHz only Wi-Fi network to force these cards to connect only to the 6 GHz channel to establish the best performance, as 6 GHz is the main reason why we'd want to purchase these 6E cards in the first place. Let's look at the TP-Link. Because of the price and the sheer size of the included antennas, 
I expected this to be a top performer, but as we'll see in the summary, this may not be the best buy overall. The iPerf results were solid at 1.07 gigabits per second, and the open speed test came in with a download speed of 1664 megabytes per second and an upload speed of 1100 megabytes per second. Though I can't validate this, the tiny extra bit of performance is most likely due to the antenna size. Looking at the performance of the OKN on iPerf, we get some good results coming in at 1.04 gigabits per second. Using Open Speed Test, it shows a download performance of 1539 megabits per second and an upload performance of 1275 megabits per second. Looking at the EDUP results, we can see a bit of a different story with an upload and download of 861 megabits per second with iPerf, which makes this considerably slower than the other cards in this roundup. Moving over to the open speed test, we see a very similar trend with a download speed of about 1535 megabits per second and an upload speed of 1079. I repeated these numbers several times and got basically the same results every time. This card just happens to have some low performance using iPerf. Let's take a quick look at the Ubic card. This card proved to be the most interesting to me for a lot of reasons. As we can see from the iPerf results, this card turned in one of the fastest iPerf numbers of any of these cards, coming in at 1120 megabits per second. Looking at the performance of the open speed test, the download numbers hit 1550 megabits per second with an upload performance of 1076 megabits per second, making this the second fastest open speed test numbers. Taking a look at the Fenvi, I had the highest expectation for this card. However, the Fenvi was the biggest disappointment. Visually, as well as the overall design and construction, was originally my favorite card. That said, it turned out the worst performance in both tests with iPerf numbers of 870 and open speed test numbers of 1395 megabits per second and upload numbers of 898 megabits per second. And I repeated these tests several times to see if uh, it was just a fluke or if I could improve them, but every time was pretty much of a disappointment. In addition to the lowest performance, it's the second highest cost card in the roundup. So looking at this summary, the results ended up quite different than I originally predicted. Based on my testing, it's really hard to recommend the FenV or the TP-Link cards. For reasons I don't understand, despite using the same Intel chipset, the FenDi does not perform nearly as well as the others. And given the price, it doesn't even make sense to buy this card. On the other end of the spectrum is the TP-Link, which has decent performance, and on the open speed test came in at one of the fastest download times of any of the cards but it almost doubled the price purchasing this card doesn't make a lot of sense either as the gap in performance is pretty marginal at best of the three remaining cards the ubit came in with great performance and it's only a dollar more than the lowest price card if you're attracted to the possibility of moving the card into a laptop in the future the okn is also a good choice the EDUP card I wouldn't recommend mainly because of the poor iPerf numbers. I tried numerous times to see if I could improve those numbers, but it just wouldn't work. It was continuously low. Given the other two options you could buy from, I would stay away from this card unless you're really unable to buy the other two. One thing to keep in mind is the res this is the results I got, and your mileage may vary. In addition, the access points you use may be different and could change the performance results pretty significantly. Many factors such as local interference, distance, and obstruction can impact the performance of 6 GHz, as it's pretty directional. All in all, I was really impressed that these speeds could be achieved over wireless. Remember that you'll need a Wi-Fi 6E access point or router in your network and switches that support 2.5 gigabit or higher to reach speeds above 1 gigabit. You can still provide a huge benefit going to 6E even if you're limited to a 1 gigabit network as it's still faster than Wi-Fi 6. But just to understand, you'll be capped at the 1 gigabit maximum throughput of your network. It gives me hope that with the upcoming Wi-Fi 7 that we'll see even more speed and performance from wireless. Anyway, that's about it for today's video and I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments below. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like as it does help promote the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.